Hi, among my Christmas presents, I received from my daughter a voucher. A voucher to be able to go to Dimmock's bookshop and buy myself a book. So what did I do on Boxing Day? I went into Dimmock's and I bought this book. The Tap Dancing Knife Thrower by Paul Hogan. Now Paul Hogan, of course, is a very well-known Australian entertainer, film star, very famous man indeed. I always thought that Paul was older than me, but actually I'm three years older than him. That said, we both lived through Australia in the 1950s in Western Sydney. When I look at what Paul has to say and compare it against my own life, I realise we had so many similarities. Our interests were so much the same. And he lived in the Parramatta area, as did I. And this meant that many things that he did, I did too. Coincidence, isn't it? One of the things that he talks about is when we were about 17, picking up girls in the picture show. Now we would seek out a girl who was obviously waiting to be picked out. Sit next to her, put your arm along the back seat and eventually pluck up courage to give her a kiss. Well, Paul did this and he says so in his book and so did I. He also mentions about Marlon Brando in the film The Wild One and how all the teenagers bought big motorbikes, as did Paul. He bought himself a Triumph Thunderbird. And would you believe it? So did I. Bought myself a Triumph Thunderbird. He talks about working in a foundry at one stage in his early life and how he used to shovel this horrible grit and put things to make cast iron in a foundry. And I've done the same. So many things in parallel. Of course, he led a very adventurous life and a different path altogether. And he worked high on the Sydney Harbour Bridge, got used to heights. I could never do that. I remember working in the dry dock on the superstructure of HMAS Sydney, far, far above the ground and trembling with fear and frightened to let go of, the, of anything that I could hold on to as I painted the mast high up. So we were very different in that way. But it's interesting reading and I've only read the first couple of chapters so far. He talks about going into the, into the army. This would have been national service, which in those days was, I think, about a six-month stint. My, I never went into national service, I went to the regular Navy, not six months, six years. So there was a fair bit of difference there. But I'm going to get on and read the rest of the book because I know that a lot of it involves places like Byron Bay, where my son worked later on in life, and where I holidayed when Byron Bay was not the place it is today. In fact, I can recall saying to my wife, and when we, when we were very young, we were coming back from the Gold Coast. The highest building in the Gold Coast then, by the way, was about a four-storey building. And there was a sign, land for sale in Byron Bay. And I remember saying to my wife, who the hell would want to live in Byron Bay? We'll look at it today. How wrong we can be. But I'm going to get back to reading this book. I think it'll be very interesting. And of course, there's laughs all the way through. He really knows how to spin a yarn.